the candidates for the House of Representatives, District 15, are now on the podium. Please introduce yourselves and tell us what will be your first priority on your chair? first day in office. You have I one keep minute. Eyes. And the timekeepers will give you 30 second warnings. And would the timekeepers also face it towards me as well so I can see? Thank you. Mr. Yoder, you pulled number one. Okay. Uh, Norma and the uh, Filipino Chamber of Commerce, as well as all the residents here for Kauai, I appreciate you guys coming up very much to uh, find out what the candidates believe and think. Uh, my first day in office will be kind of understanding what the big square building is about, meeting the other state legislatures. Uh, I'm very inter much just interested in meeting Sam Sloan, the one and only Republican out of uh, 25 seats there in the, in the state Senate. But I've been very curious for quite a few years, uh, and we've seen the problem grow here in Kauai as far as traffic. And I remember asking the question to uh, Jay Fafara, why not put a road from Princeville down to Knudsen's Pass and have the whole island spike up to it. Of course, he kind of rolled his eyes at me, but I, and, and that, that's nothing to say against Jay, but I, I'm really curious as to the fact of what it would take to relieve the, the traffic that we suffer in the corridor. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Tokioka. Thank you, Norma. Um, I'd like to take part of my time to thank everyone who is here tonight, uh, the Filipino Chamber, the Chamber of Commerce, in my 18 years of elected office, this is one of the biggest forums I've ever seen. So thank you all for being here tonight. Um, you know, I will take uh, the role of some of the candidates earlier. It's hard to talk about one thing, but the most important thing that I would do is to continue to listen to all of you. You know, that's our job. Our job is to represent the community. And sometimes on big issues, we might not always agree on what the outcome is, but I've sent out surveys that will continue to be the eyes and the ears for the people, and that will be the first thing that I will do and continue to do for the people in the District 15 on Kauai and Kauai as a whole. Mahalo. Thank you. Mr. Hooser? Hi, everyone. Uh, first, first, I'd like to thank everyone tonight for coming and listening to us speak tonight. Uh, thank you for the Filipino Chamber of Commerce for hosting this event. It was a uh, big thing we put together for all the candidates. And uh, thank you for all coming and listening to us. Um, you know, one of my first priorities would be to take care of our kupuna. You know, we need to ensure that we protect our, our retirees' pension benefits. Um, that would be my first priority. And like, like Representative Tokyo like I said, there's, it's hard to just narrow it down the line because there's quite a few, but uh, yeah, the first one would be to protect our kupuna. Thank you. Mr. Yoder, what do you think is needed and what will you do to encourage high-tech enterprises to start up businesses on Kauai. You have two minutes. Okay, thank you. Well, the things that encourage the business to come is the same thing like with the movie industry. My background is, is tourism. I've been working for a company called uh, Kauai North Star Limo on Tours for 20 years. And it's the biggest industry here in Hawaii. So to get to the, to the root of your question here is what causes businesses to start is, is the need for capital. And whatever, uh, Governments impose taxes and overregulation in an industry. It defeats the purpose of that business showing up. Uh, the states that right now have uh, the biggest in, uh, increase in population right now are Florida and also the state of Texas. The two states that have the least are New York and Ohio, meaning that congressional seats in Ohio, they've lost two congressional seats coming down to Texas. And then New York has lost two congressional seats coming back to Florida because there's no state tax in either of those states. And for businesses to grow, businesses will go to a state that provides them with a lower tax base. So New York now is, is basically mimicking Rick Perry. Come, you guys have seen it on TV. Come to New York, you don't have to pay corporate taxes for 10 years. And so it's lowering the taxes, less government, more individual freedom. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Tokioka. Children who are not five years old before July 31st, 2014, will not be able to enter kindergarten, and there are not enough sufficient educational opportunities for these children. What is your position on this change to public kindergartens? You have two minutes. Uh, I voted in favor of that bill, and the reason I did is because there was a lot of surveys and a lot of studies done for many, many years, 
And I didn't know this, that you know, children in Hawaii were not mandatorily, um, it was a mandatory to go to kindergarten. And I was shocked to hear that. And so some children uh, weren't going into kindergarten. Um, but what we did, what I did support is the early education program because what's happening now is in the general classes in kindergarten, there are many uh, children that come into school that haven't gone to preschool. And these, uh, some of their parents are uh, less fortunate, they don't have the resources. So what the early education program that we're pushing is, is to make sure that as many people as we can that are on fixed incomes have the opportunity to get into kindergarten. And that's important because when they are in the classrooms, a lot of times they're not socially ready for, for the schools. And I think that's very important that once this one child or two child or three children um, are in a classroom and you know they're distracting the other kids because they're not used to that environment, it brings all the other kids back. So that's one of the reasons why I'm in strong support of the early education program and I will continue to be an advocate for that. So that as many children can get into preschool so they, they can be ready for uh, kindergarten. Thank you. Mr. Boozer. What is your position on the present administration's initiative to build an adequate substance abuse treatment facility on Kauai? You have two minutes. I feel that is very necessary and important. Um, I feel like the uh, drug epidemic that is uh, uh, affecting my peers is, is present and prevalent, and uh, there isn't enough being done on Kauai to uh, tackle that problem. And, um, it's sad. I mean, prescription drugs, from prescription drugs to methamphetamines, they're going rampant on the streets. As much as people might think that they're not anymore, they're still there. And we need to support, our, our, at least my peers, the people I grew up with. I mean, it's not okay for, for people to have nowhere to go but jail. And this, I, I think that uh, drug treatment should be looked at as public health instead of a public safety problem. Thank you. Mr. Yoder, please hold, your, please hold your applause. Thank you. Mr. Yoder, what is your position on the state health clinics, facilities, and services on Kauai? You have one minute. Well, as far as my position on, on the health state facilities, is, uh, you've got to have enough money to run the operations. I'm, I'm a little bit disturbed as, as to, the, to the intrusion of What's happening in our healthcare system now through Obamacare and, and, and things of that nature. So, as far as we've got it, we've got to make a way to keep uh, facilities open for the people. But yet, at the same time, they have to they have enough money to operate. We've got to, we've got to figure out a way to uh, to handle that situation. So I don't know how conclusive that is, but I'm very concerned about uh, what's happening with healthcare, especially in, the, in relationship to Obamacare. Thank you. Mr. Tokyoka, what is your view on how important is the military presence in Hawaii? And is our local economy too dependent on it? You have one minute. Thank you so much. Um, I'm very supportive of the military. And you know, when Hurricane Iniki hit, we were so fortunate on this island to have PMRF here. You know, they helped get this island started. You know, it was an uh, incredible opportunity for PMRF to show what they do, and they've been doing that for years. I know Mayor Kusaka is sitting here, and you know she had to work with a lot of that, um, the DSR reports. And you know PMRF stepped to the table. You know one of the things that we did this past legislative session is we gave a GIA to the Chamber of Commerce, their military uh, committee, and it's a two hundred million dollar grant. We know Senator Inouye is not going to is not no longer here. So we need to figure out how we can best manage all of the resources in the military in the state of Hawaii. And this grant will make sure that we, PMRF stays here for now and forever in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Boozer. How would you propose to downsize government at the state level while still providing the current level of services to the public and why? You have two minutes. You know, honestly. I'm sorry, excuse me, you have one minute. Honestly, I'm the only one I'm doing. I don't know everything, and I can't answer every question. I would uh, look to the public and uh, get public input and, and, and decide based on broad-based community input. Um, 
I believe in a smaller government as long as it's a comprehensive government. You know, uh, but if, if the government isn't comprehensive, we can need to make sure it covers all aspects of our society. Thank you. Mr. Yoder, you may now have two minutes for your closing statement. Okay. Well, once again, I want to thank uh, the Philippine Chamber of Commerce, yourself, Norma, as well as all of you guys coming out here to listen. And the, the main reason why I'm running, folks, and I hate to, I hate to read anything, but it's part of my heart here also is why I'm running. There's been no one running District 15 at the last session. We found you uh, June 3rd, it was uh, two years ago. That, that was pretty much it. You, Jimmy. I'm, I'm looking forward to see if we can nominate somebody for a conservative ideology, uh, basically for less government, for individualism. And our country is not founded on the dependence of government, but freedom from the tyranny of government. And what, what I want to do, folks, is lower taxes, reduce overregulation. Many of you guys have received uh, year after year for the last two years. Uh, your, let's say for those of you guys who drive a truck or any vehicle, it just keeps on going up and up. And of course, the, the governor promised not to raise taxes, but he didn't say anything about fees. A fee tax, we're still spending way too much left out, way too much in this government right here. But big government places a heavy burden on the family budget, it drives up the cost of products, causing families to struggle as never before. One of the things I'd like to see repealed would be the Jones Act that came out during the 20s and 30s, where it requires the state of Hawaii to, or excuse me, the uh, U.S., to only allow ships to travel between ports within the U.S. that are made by a corporation in the U.S. and registered in the U.S. What it's doing, basically, it's just driving up our, our, our cost of living out here. Lowering taxes, lowering regulation, and also, I believe in a compassionate government. I believe that compassion is not defined by how many people are on welfare, but folks, by how many people we get off welfare. And that society owes its citizens equality of opportunity, but you cannot carry, guarantee them equality of outcome. And that's what's being pushed down in this government. We're trying to make everything fair. Am I being fair? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Tokioka, you may now have two minutes for your closing statement. Thank you so much. And once again, thank you to the Filipino Chamber and the Chamber of Commerce for having this. Um, I just want all of you to know that I've been humbled for the past 18 years to represent you, 10 years on the county council, and 8 years in the state house. And during that time, we've done a lot of good things, and I'm proud of uh, the record that I've had in the state house. Um, you know, we, I can just name a few projects, two minutes is a short amount of time, but you know, one of the things that was brought up earlier was the Wailua Corridor. The first thing I did when we went there was we lowered the speed limit from 50 miles an hour to 40 miles an hour. We put in funding for rumble strips, uh, we put in uh, speed radars in that area, and the traffic fatalities in that area have gone down dramatically. And I don't want to jinx anything, but you know, those are the types of things that we did, and it wasn't, you know, by passing a bill. It was working with the department. So I think with the experience that I have, it's easy to call the Department of Transportation Director, the Agriculture Director, the State Health Director, to get things done for Kauai. Uh, the team that we have on Kauai, I'm very, very proud of. Representative Kawakami is here, Representative Morikawa is here, Senator Kochi wanted to be here, but he has a guest from the mainland that he's uh, with. And I'm a part of that team, and I'm proud of that team, because we focus on bringing home projects to, to Kauai. In the 15th district, $10 million for a new gym at Kauai High School. $6.5 million for a library at Kapa'a High School. Uh, Brett Morikawa was successful in getting a lot of money for projects on the west side this year. So I want to continue to be a part of that team and, and to work with everyone and to, to continue to be your eyes and your ears. Because that's the best part of the job for me, is when I can help people on this island and in, in my district. I love it. And I want to continue to be that voice for you. Mahalo. Thank you. Mr. Hooser, you may now have two minutes for your closing statement. I want to, would also like to thank everyone for coming out tonight. Filipino Chamber of Commerce, thank you guys for hosting this event. This is actually my first forum as a candidate, and uh, it's, it's a nice experience. Thank you guys. Um, you know, my name is Dylan Hooser, and I'm running for the House Representative seat in District 15. I was born and raised here, and it's time to give back. The incumbent's values and legislative decisions do not reflect mine or the community I grew up in. Your polar opposites. I'm running an issue based campaign based on core democratic values and protecting our Kukuna. The incumbent voted to tax retirees' pensions. I will never vote to tax retirees' pensions or benefits. Another core democratic value is protecting the environment. The incumbent strongly and aggressively supported the Public Land Development Corporation.
something I would never do, and it's bad public policy. We need, to be, we need to be protecting our natural resources for the generations to come, not develop them for quick profits and short-term gains. The third core democratic value I hold true is supporting and fighting for our working people. The incumbent voted with reservations on a recent minimum wage bill and have and worked hard to weaken it for restaurant workers. I believe workers deserve a living wage, not just a minimum wage. I will work hard to make that happen. Supporting core democratic values are the key to making the community the best it can be. I want to serve as your voice in working and fighting to protect these core democratic values. To be successful, I need your vote. My name is Dylan Hooser. Thank you.